So what you're looking at is uh, one plan. So uh, for those of you that have never been in our solution, you know, one plan has uh, a number of different areas uh, on the left-hand navigation that represent components of, um, you know, what we're actually managing. There is uh, on the right a uh, series of views areas that give us, you know, we can do a list views, board views, list views, board views, roadmap views, and um, dashboarding, which uh, is our link to Power BI. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at a strategic portfolio application. You could have, you know, more than one, but here we, we've, um, you can see that I, I could have different, what we call groups, but uh, I have one focused just on strategic portfolio. So the first thing that we've done, you have um, what's called a planning hierarchy. And I combined what are, you know, traditional EPPM O uh, components, um, portfolio program project and epics for effect. Here we separate what are you know project waterfall projects uh, from what are uh, you know agile epics. And then I've also added uh, the components from uh, my EA strategy. Uh, and you you can also separate them. In other words, I have my, for my my enterprise architecture. Again, for components that are being brought from uh, Smart 360, which is again a component that we've added to one plan, they are all uh, mapped here. So I was talking about um, you know value streams and capabilities. Here I have a, a, my list of value streams and capabilities. I could be rating them, by the way, and uh, defining them through surveys. Uh, I could be stating whether there you know is a current architecture, or target architecture, um, and as with all items that you define within one plan, what you can have is, um, you know, the definition of, uh, uh, in this case, of a valley stream. So, and what we're showing here is information that is actually coming from Smart 360. So I'll show it in a second. But um, what we're we're bringing this in in order to be able to establish, like I said, those relationships. So we have associated capabilities and associated applications to the valley stream. Okay, and even to the, the whole product, the product that we're managing here. So the product actually is made up of um, uh, applications, which is supporting uh, this capability. And it could be, um, in this case, uh, tracking um, flow metrics, uh, for instance. So I could do that here. I have a, um, I'm actually going to a target maturity level with this value stream. Um, I have a life cycle for it. I mean, the, there's really no limitation in terms of what you can do for um, making sure that you have the the metadata that's coming from your repository um, into uh, into one plan. You, if you wanted to, again, these are just features uh, of one plan. You could be tracking financials or investments on it, or even uh, you know work plan or projects that um, that are being done uh, on this on this valley stream. I'll go back to my. Lesson. You can see here that, um, um, I, again, for illustrative purposes, we have uh, two value streams. We have a number of different capabilities. We have a number of different applications um, and then, um, you know, products that, uh, that we're managing. So this is the enterprise architecture component of it. But really, that, that is actually coming from, I'll go back to portfolio. Our enterprise architecture tool. And this is um, Smart 360. In this case, it's been integrated within our dashboard tab. But essentially, the definition of every one of those uh, elements um, is shown here within this tool. We're integrating them into one plan in order to do portfolio management, which I'll go back in a second. But I just wanted to highlight that all of that data within uh, my enterprise architecture is coming from uh, you know, the model that we've defined. So this is where your business architecture um, you know, uh, business process, business mapping, business unit, product, and uh, value streams are going to be showing. So uh, we're going to, you know, uh, create them, establish the relationships between all the different components, and then uh, be able to do the analysis. And I'll, we'll go back to Smart 360 in a second. Be able to do the analysis of um, what is, you know, project prioritization against our application. So here's where um, you know, the real value of uh, of having all the data together. I'm trying to do a prioritization scenario and I'm trying to determine 
the impact on my applications uh, from doing these investments. And um, uh, you can see here that you know we've actually associated them because at every point here, we have a proposed project that's called test states. We have our, our application, our, I mean, we could be, okay, is this part of uh, e-payments? We'll make it part of e-payments. And um, we can see here um, if, if this actually was uh, impacting strategy uh, objectives and key results, you can see that here. Uh, the actual you know, business case, if we have a business case narrative, it's probably not a good project because it doesn't have all of the data set completed, but you can see that at the project level, I have everything that I need, and you can see here that I have the capability map. So within my strategy for this project, I can uh, associate how is this impacting a value stream and application. Obviously, if it's impacting a capability, then you know you will have a relationship to a value stream because that's what the uh, capabilities will will support uh, a value stream. So I have everything that I need to be able to make a decision. And then if I come back here, I can say, well, you know, if I go by prioritization score, um, these are my uh, the you know, the actual scores of the projects, okay? And um, so I have here, um, if you remember, I was making reference to the centralization of IT initiative. It's not the highest rated project. Um, in terms of its uh, budget and benefits, it looks good. Um, but do we, you know, if we're gonna focus on the, our top 10 projects, do we really wanna um, have centralization of IT B13 since, you know, this includes cloud initiatives. So we'll answer that question in a second. Um, but here, what we're what we're doing is trying to see exactly, you know, how um, uh, our projects are associated to applications. I could do the same thing, probably from a starting point in terms of capabilities. So uh, again, I could look at my uh, my ranking, my prioritization scores, and again, centralization of IT is uh, 13. Do we want to keep it there? based on the capabilities that um, that is supporting it. You can see here that it's supporting an, a large set of capabilities. So do we wanna keep it? Uh, we have four different capabilities here that are being impact, impacted uh, when we do this project. Uh, I added one additional one here just to, to see, you could also add you know, your value stream. So you know, if you are, especially the ones that are customer facing, um, do we have to be uh, pay particular attention? You know, which ones are the ones that are quote to cash, for instance? Uh, you know, that drive how we are actually going to um, generate uh, revenue uh, from our operations. And again, we can see the capabilities, we can see the value stream, and and we can see interestingly enough that you know centralization of IT is one that falls within that. So if our focus is on the value stream, again, we might want to make sure that we don't. Um, we don't sacrifice this project. You, by the way, you note some icons here, so you can bring in work from uh, uh, other uh, planning solutions, other work uh, solutions. Here we have projects that are being done in Project Professional, but um, you know they could be done directly within one plan, and also um, for Epix, um, you know, Agile work from uh, Azure DevOps uh, or Jira. So. And every one of these items, um, in fact, let's go to centralization of IT. You can see that um, we have the details, the financials, the resource plan, the work plan itself of what's going to be uh, delivered uh, and some reporting. Uh, but if we wanted to evaluate this and then see its impact on within our enterprise architecture, here's where the project itself, the project form would reside. And you can see here, again, the alignment to the EA strategy our value stream, our applications, and our associated capabilities. So we might not wanna, we wanna be careful also not to uh, impact uh, these applications um, when, we, uh, when we consider our funding. So getting back to our, our repository, let's go here. And you know, the, the repository, we've gone through and defined all of our applications. So um, we'll go ahead and see, just so that you can, you can appreciate how you can um, uh, literally come in and um, you know view all of the uh, richness, all of the relationships that um, that have been defined. Um, who are the users? What are the business mappings? Uh, business object associations, capabilities, um, and you know at any point you can you know let's go 
into this specifically. And uh, from a different perspective, looking at the capability balance accounts and uh, again, peeking and seeing, okay, what are the impacts? Who's accountable? What is its status? So the surveys will have already gone out and you're actually assessing and determining you know, value and uh, complexity status uh, for every one of these. And um, I can you know, easily go into one specifically and then um, you know, come in and this is, a, again, the, the benefit of having an enterprise uh, architecture repository where it's very easy to come in and you know, make definitions. Uh, if there, this one doesn't have an owner, so I could be defining, you know, an owner. I could define myself as an owner. Uh, if there's an additional, by the way, relation uh, application that needs to be added, you could add it to here directly. Uh, or sorry, an additional relationship. Here we are, we are in an application. So uh, here's my business mappings uh, capabilities that we're supporting for each of these. So I have to have built our repository this is where uh, the source information resides um, and then we are you know mapping it to within one plan in order to make our uh, portfolio decisions and you can see that all of the relationships uh, interfaces and now we're getting into the um, technology and infrastructure components that um, that are part of uh, defining an application So likewise, we could be doing the same um, for uh, other elements within our model. And you can see here that, you know, there's really no limitation. And this is, you know, representative uh, in terms of what we have in our value streams, which we were we were looking at, our procure to pay and our quote to cash are here. So um, anything that um, has to be uh, defined within the repository for the for the value streams, you could be doing here uh, directly. And that's what that information is. Uh, you know, integrated into into one plan. So why do we do this? We do this, um, you know, for purposes of uh, doing better investments within our portfolio, and it's really about um, our visualizations. So, um, you know, uh, let's see, uh, what's a good one? Uh, um, capabilities and projects. This is the one that I was referring to earlier, where we have capabilities, applications, and projects. And um, the key question on centralization of IT you see here is um, impacting um, uh, exchange trade, is impacting order execution, order clearing, pretty much almost every every one um, of our capabilities. So we should really be careful not to um, you know, not to sacrifice this project because we're going to be impacting um, uh, a lot of different capabilities. So um, and you know this has to do with you know centralization of IT. Um, having a lot of cloud components uh, as part of the initiative. But we can keep going down and seeing, you can see all the different types of visualizations that uh, we can um, uh, we can do. Let's go ahead and select another one. Um, project by strategic driver. So uh, some uh, strategic drivers that we've defined um and how are uh you know the projects operational projects excellent green it social and uh cloud enabled so the projects from one plan are actually coming uh into also into uh, smart 360 so we can then do establish these relations that we can see here centralization of it by the way which is the one that we've been focusing on belongs to the you know operational um our operational strategic driver so let's go to another Another one of our saved visualizations. A uh, very standard, you know, list in terms of our project. Uh, what's the application that we're hitting, and what and what's the capability? You know, similar to what we have in one plan, but you can also uh, do that here. Capability portfolio. So, in terms of our capability portfolio, you know, what's the uh, strategic value exchange rate has uh, the highest strategic value. Um, uh, as as a as a capability, and decision support has the lowest. Um, this has um, you know probably something we need to uh, we need to probably improve uh, in terms of um, uh, our investment. It's way you know very very low, and it probably has to do a lot with um, you know supporting executives in um, in doing that. Uh, and you know you have the ability here not to have this perspective and take it as part of our um, 
um, your, your investment portfolio, you can see that uh, you know clearing has the highest uh, investment, and you know right around in the middle with in terms of our strategic value. So, what I want to do is let's go to another uh, repository. So you see here, this is more of a you know standard landscape diagram where we're seeing um, applications. And um, we are, application in the center, we're actually seeing um, business uh, business mapping, so the you know, business unit mappings, and then the process um, on the uh, on, on the y-axis. So um, from here, you know, we can try to look for, uh, you're, you're trying to look for, you know, empty spaces or duplicate uh, spaces. Here we see SAP, you know, as a, a primary application for controlling. Uh, so, you know, and that's our ERP, so we can't really uh, uh, do their, if if they have ratings, by the way, we could color code this to show the ratings, um, but we can see here, you know, the CRM applications within customer management and customer strategy, those are fairly important. Um, uh, when you're doing your, you know, target architecture, um, if you're taking applications out, decommissioning applications, you can start seeing what the impact is um, on, you know, your, uh, specific uh, process and, and business areas. And let's see if we have, um, you can see that, you know, what what the part of a, an implementation is making sure that we are actually uh, defining what um, your uh, visualizations are going to be based on, on the data and then having that uh, on a continuous basis uh, for you to leverage when you're making uh, decisions. These are app dependencies. So in terms of, you know, how do, what are the relationships between applications and the interfaces that they have? So uh, market analysis is dependent on ERP, which actually has an integration. And, you know, you can go through and um, see the one that, um, you know, has the highest or lowest uh, level of uh, dependencies. CRM is here. We talked about that. You know, our SAP, um, our ERP is over here uh, with, here we have a data warehouse, obviously, you know, taking inputs and, and outputs uh, to, to other applications. So if you've gone through and defined the, um, your, your elements in the repository, then, you know, the, the end goal is to have, um, you know, uh, these um, visualizations ready for you. 